Taylor can never win with with what she says. It'll always be twisted by someone. So I I thought I'd come out and say what I thought, which is which is the truth. She has only dated two people in two years, and I have friends that have been with like ten people in one year, and people wouldn't say that they're a slut. I guess it's cool to roll in the Taylor Swift inner circle. The venues are big. There's always a lot of people. On this tour, they've all reacted really well. You kind of get your energy off the crowd. If the crowd's really kind of subdued, then you're going to be subdued, I guess. The first two rows, they're the ones that are the expensive tickets. And sometimes you get the odd person in there who's just got a lot of money, who just stands there and looks a bit subdued. But, you know, they paid their money. And if they're having fun, they're having fun, I guess. But it's the ones at the back that go nuts. Oh, the daughters having a good time, yeah. I don't know if dads are meant to have good times at, at, at big shows. I took my dad to see Green Day, I don't know if he liked them. Well, they said F the Queen at one point, and he was a bit like, what? I actually made the fatal mistake of uh, sitting down with my label heads, and I played him the second album, and then I played him the third album, and he was like, oh, well, I like this song, this song, so now we have too many for the second album, so I'm gonna record them all, but now I'm in a confused state of which one to put them on. The first album I did was more acoustic driven because that's how we recorded it and how and how I wrote it. But this this time I've had more time to kind of experiment a little bit and do some do some different stuff, I guess. Well, I've already started recording it. Yeah, I've already started. I, I'll, I'll finish it in August. I wanted it to come out this year, but it has to come out next year. It was amazing. I felt like a teenage girl though, like a proper fangirled out. Because he went on stage to play Gangnam Style and he's like, this is for my friend Ed Sheeran, and then played it. And I was like, oh my god, he dedicated Gangnam Style to me. And yeah, proper fangirled out. And like, so that was the uh, second time I met Sai, yeah. But the first time I met him was at one of those jingle ball things and like, he was being harassed. And I was like, I really want to pitch with him because I was just about to go home for Christmas and I wanted to show my friends that I'd met, met Sai. And I was like, I really want to pitch with him, but I don't want like, to wait to be introduced. So I literally just snuck in, did a selfie and then walked away. <laughs> Ed Sheeran's dissing Selena Gomez. I know Selena through um, Taylor and we actually hung out quite a lot that night. It wasn't actually directed at that, it was just after that, a lot of people came up to me and were like, oh, it's so good you didn't lip sync. And I was just a bit confused because I was like, I thought you know, I thought that was like a normal thing to do. So I tweeted it and yeah, people people put words in my mouth, but I think I made it clear that it wasn't, it wasn't intended as a diss. I think you can't be a successful artist and not have and not have haters. Mumford and Sons get quite a lot of stick in England, and I think they're one of the best bands out at the moment. Adele got really bad press in England at one point as well, and Adele's Adele. She's she's amazing. I think you can't you can't be a successful act and have everyone love you. It kind of defeats the point of of being successful. I think the worst thing in the world would be to have someone just be nonchalant, and meh, you know. I think you either love someone devoted or or you hate someone. And I think being associated with the ones that are like that isn't necessarily a bad thing. All all, all of the people that I've I've ended up working with or being associated with have been incredibly successful. I don't, I don't think that's something that people should put down. And incredibly successful at a young age as well, which is something that should be celebrated. Having someone like Harry who became a millionaire before he turned 21, off music and off work, you know, not off who wants to be a millionaire or selling drugs or whatever. He's done, he's done well and I think people should um, respect that.